this is Gail from Gail Julie Makes and I'm here with my second video for Fairy Stamper. Just wanted to show you first of all some of the new stamps that I've got from Fairy Hugs. So um, I'll go through them and just give you a quick demo. We have got um, the Hedgehog set, very cute detail, I love the detail on the faces on these ones, they're so cute. Okay, we've got the beautiful Heron stamp. I'm hoping as well the way I've laid these out will give you a bit of an idea of the sort of size comparison compared to some of the other stamps they've got as well. Um, this is the Fireflies. I'm really looking forward to working this one. This was probably the first stamp I saw um, that instantly gave me ideas um, as to what I could do. Then I've got the Lantern set. I think they'll work really well with the hedgehogs. I don't know why, I just associate those lanterns with the hedgehogs. So we'll see what we can produce with those. Might not be this video, but another time. Then we've got the canoe. I really like this one. It's really unusual. I've not seen a stamp like this one in the fairy world so far. So really excited to use that one. I've got Takara. Lovely um, fairy stamp. I think she lends herself really well to working with those fireflies. So that was my instant thought when I saw her and the fireflies. They will go perfectly together. This one um, is Sunken Ship. Now, I love this one. Um... Again, myself and my husband, he loves this one as well because we both really like the film The Fog. Um, it's one that we like to rewatch quite a few times. It's very atmospheric and it makes me think of this sunken ship. So expect maybe a spooky, um, a spooky picture further down the line using that one. Okay, then we've got the fairy condo design. Now this was one of the first ones that I saw and thought, yeah, going to have to get myself that one. Really unusual design. Love the toadstool on this one. So really pretty stamp. And um, I have got an obsession with trees. So any tree stamp that is out there, I will get. This is called the moon tree. And it's beautiful design. Um, lends itself well to hanging things off. And um, I just love that sort of circular effect in the middle that almost is like a moon. So perfect. And then we've got the hanging vine stamp. Now, um, this has been used on our channel for uh, seaweed, which turned out really well. So it's a multi-use stamp. You can use this way for seaweed or you can, as I'm going to use it today, this way, you can use it this way for a, a hanging vine effect. So it's a multi-use stamp, really useful to have this one in your collection. I will put links to all of these as well in the um, description. OK, so first things first, we're going to make our background. Um, using our six inch round gel plate you could use a four inch round if you wanted to or you can even use square it's up to you I just seem to be having a phase with my round gel plate at the moment at the moment okay so we're going to make our background with alcohol ink this time and some alcohol lift ink just to add a bit of pattern to it so this is going to be fairly quick first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to add a bit of hand gel so this is hand sanitizer if you haven't seen this method already if you go to my channel Gail Julie makes on YouTube um, I explain it all really clearly on there for you on, on why we're using it and how but basically we put in a layer that we can move our inks around onto our plate okay so I'm going to bray that across you don't need lots and do be careful there's not any inks sort of on, on your plate already that you might reactivate because I've had that problem before and I'm just going to bray that off on the side there okay so um that's given us a base now for our alcohol inks to move around on almost like sort of if we're using UPO paper in the blending solution. Okay, so what I'm going to do is build up, um, build up the background. So I'm, I'm working on this design. Okay, so I'm going to lay a, I know it sounds a bit strange, but I'm putting pattern on the ground. I suppose it's kind of more of a green, isn't it, than a blue. So I'm going to lay some pattern on the bottom there. And maybe a little bit of, actually we'll stick, with, we'll stick with what we've been doing before. Okay, so top I'm going to be adding some honeycomb. These are the Ranger inks. So you should be able to get those on Fairy Stamper, the Tim Holtz. Um, Tim Holtz quite often uses them. Okay, so we've got um, honeycomb, that's one of my favourite colours. And we're going to have a bit of rust at the side there. And we're going to go in with that eggplant colour in a second. I'm just going to get a bit more honeycomb on there. So I'm just literally chucking it on. I'm not worried about the sort of, not too worried about the shapes that it's making at the moment. Okay, and then I'm going to add some eggplant this side. 
okay it doesn't really matter I might add a bit of that side as well okay so next step then now I had it a second oh, I can't see for looking so I've got a blending tool here and I've got a felt pad on the end what I'm going to do is just put a bit of the um, alcohol lifting the Tim Holtz one again um, on the end just in little dabs I recommend if you're using this guys to open your window because it can be a bit pungent and then I'm just going to go in and press down okay when I think I've got a lot of that colour on my sponge on my felt, my felt pad I'm just gonna sorry I'm just braying it off off screen I could do it on my rubber mat if you if I wanted you to see it and then I'm gonna get some more on and obviously if you start um, using this alcohol lift ink on your darker areas your, your felt pad is then gonna be that sort of colour so beware that you know you are see like I'm spreading that around a bit more now but I'm, I'm not really minding that much in certain areas so I'll spread my eggplant around a bit into my um my honeycomb and my patina so if I don't want that to happen in the patina area obviously I'm going to dab off to the side it is a little bit but it's kind of adding to that colour so it's fine okay there we go. I'm just going to take a bit more off. Oh, the hair or something there. Let's get that off if we can without making too much of a mess. That's it. Cat fur. You know, I said my cat's always trying to sneak into the craft room. She did it earlier. She managed to get in earlier. So <laughs> that will be her. Right, I'm going to get a little bit more rust in there. Uh, she did a massive howl at the door, bless her, because I was in here sort of having a practice and she was like, wow. So I was like, oh no, I better let her in or she'll start sulking. Right, so I'm happy with that now. And then what I'm going to do is get a layer. I'm going to pop this in the centre of this card. The reason I have card underneath, I might have said before, is because I like to see if I can match up the card that I'm placing down on top to that, because then it, it's going to be pretty much centre see what I mean so this looks centered now so if I did it just by guessing it would be a complete disaster <laughs> it would not be in the middle I can tell you that okay I've got grubby fingers already okay so we're just gonna give that a rub sorry if the camera's wobbling a bit there we go and I'm just gonna pull that off and we've got that nice background okay so I'm quite liking that one actually nice coloration there so we don't need our gel plate again now, that can go to the side, although I would recommend just before you move it, just give it a bit of a clean again with a bit more hand gel. So um, like I say, this is, uh, this is um, hand sanitizer. So obviously most of us will have it in the house at the moment due to you know what. Make sure your hands are clean all, all time. So if you can't, you know, it's good if you're out and about, isn't it? And you haven't got access to washing your hands. So it's good for obviously cleaning your plate, but it's also good as like a, I suppose like a lubricant really for moving around your, your alcohol ink. I have, like I said, I have got a video on my channel if you want to go and have a look at that. I've got a couple of videos using the hand sanitizer and alcohol inks actually. So if you go to Gal Julie Makes, you'll find them on there. Okay, I'll put links in the description to it, to everything I do today anyway. So don't, don't worry if you don't remember. Okay, so alcohol links, like I say, you should be able to get at fairystamper.com, no problem. Um, go for your favourite colours, you know, that's what I always do. There's so many out there, you can't get them all necessarily in one go, but go pick your favourite colours out. So, I'm not worrying about fingerprints around the edge, because I'm going to go over that later. Right, I've got, my, I've got my base then. That is pretty much dry, guys, already. Haven't, obviously, I haven't stopped the camera or anything yet. It's pretty much dry. So, what we're going to do then, first job... Now, I've probably told you this before, I don't use a stamping platform. I like that feel of just, you know, pressing it on there myself and I probably should. I'm not saying they're not great. I think they are a good idea, but they're just not really me and how I do my art. So, um, so I'm going to just go for it. The stamps that I decided to use then, if we look at this picture I've got here, are the hedgehogs. Two of the hedgehogs anyway. The um, lantern. And this is called the Moon Tree. I did I did find out the name. It was on the was on the acetate. It's the Moon Tree. Okay. And then I've got a little bit of that vine in there as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to first of all uh, ink up with our Nocturne. So I'm going to get the tree. 
Now, I don't actually have a block big enough to fit the whole tree, but it's fine because you can just sort of press it. It's only really the, a couple of tiny side bits that hang off from my from my block, so it's not really a problem. And if I angle it, I might be able to get it, but I'm just going to do it the same way I did last time when I did my practice one. Okay, and I always stamp on top like this. I just find I've got more control that way. So I'm just making sure, just make sure I've got that bit rubbed off there. Just I did that. The reason I did that was because I wanted to make sure I've got that edge in that's hanging off. Okay, so to be honest, I didn't. This the quality of the stamp is great. I, I the first time I used it, I didn't ha I didn't stamp it off. I just literally used it straight on my picture, and I didn't have any problems. Okay, so you know that's good to report back. I think. If obviously if you've just bought a new stamp and you, you think mm, that's not really come out how I wanted it to, I suggest you ink it up, stamp it off a few times and then it's kind of building up a layer of that ink already. So that's a, a good way of doing it. Okay, because I've been talking, I'm just going to go in with one more layer. <laughs> you know, it's like when you get chatting, you um, you kind of just think. It's like the, 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 the one that always gets me and my husband is we're chatting, we get out of the car and it's like we walk to the house then we're like, did we lock the car because we're chatting you know so <laughs> we usually have but it's best to go and check isn't it so what I'm going to do this time is just bring it a little bit lower down I think into my picture so I'm going to pop it about uh, let's pop it about here no let's go for here Okay, because originally when I tried it, I was thinking about putting the bigger hedgehog in the bottom, but it just, the perspective and everything just didn't look right. It just looked really odd. So obviously you've got to bear these sort of things in mind, haven't you, when you're doing your piece. So I am laying that down. I'm just going to press those side areas that are off the block just to make sure they're stamping as well. Now, when you look at this, it will look quite faint. Not faint, but very, I'd say, fine detail. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with some Distress Spray Stain with my paintbrush and just make sure that tree is coloured in. So if you look at this one, I've coloured that tree in with that Distress Spray Stain. Okay, you might use a watercolour, you might use a watercolour pencil, um, anything you've got really that's going to get some Copic markers, that sort of thing, anything you want to use to get a bit of colour on there. There we go, that's actually come out bolder this time so I am pleased with that um I think like I say obviously the first stamp if you have a look that's I think that's good for a first stamp isn't it the first ever stamp from a piece um but you can see this one is even bolder so it's building up that that layer of ink so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do the same as last time I do like the look of it like that to be honest but I'm just going to get a bit on there anyway so I've got a fine misting of distress, distress spray stain if we're now, you can't see it really, it's fine. And then I'm just going to pop a bit of water. So I suggest if you're spraying something, move your artwork out of the way. And then I'm just going to spray some water onto my distress spray stain. Move a bit of that out so I know it's not too dark. I have got, my paintbrush here is... Uh, sorry guys, you know when you're just having one of those days... My paintbrush is probably a bit too big, so I'm just going to grab a smaller one. And then I'm just going to start working away. I'm not too worried about things bobbing up around the edge, because I'm going to go over that with ox Distress Oxide anyway. And then I'm just going to go in with a bit more colour. Okay. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, as you can see, I did go over the line sometimes. It doesn't really matter because the alcohol ink is so patchy. Um, it's got that lovely texture to it that you can't really tell, to be honest. So it's absolutely fine. I meant to say, sorry, that's Distress Spray Stain in Vintage Photo by um, Ranger and Tim Holtz. I love that stain. It's one of my favourite spray stains, that Vintage Photo. You can use it in so many ways. Okay, right. So we've got our tree ready. Now... What I will say is obviously it needs, you need to make sure it's dry. So I'm just going to pause this while I go off and dry it. I'm, I can never be bothered to dry it on camera. Um, so I'm just going to pause that. I'll be back.
Okay, everyone, it's dry and I am back. So, next stage then is to um, start doing some more stamping. So, I'm going to work with the lanterns next. Okay, so what I did last time was I just used a small lantern. So, I thought because of the size of the tree, we don't really want to, you know, we don't want it to go too crazy. So, I'm gonna not. I'm gonna ink up in the nocturne again, as I do remember to mop up your vintage photo off your uh, off your mat. Otherwise, it goes all over your ink lid. Right, so I'm gonna ink up in the nocturne. I'm just gonna ink it this way around this time because it's a smaller stamp. Okay, just making sure I'm getting enough on there. Okay, that's fine. So I think these are really cute to go with the hedgehogs. These lanterns. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to hang one off um, this branch here. It's nice when you've got a guide to go from, so I do like using my initial reference one, especially if I'm doing a video for you guys. Okay. Um, so do remember we have got the really good Facebook group, um, which is Fairy Stamper Hugs. So if you ever want to see some, you know, brilliant work using all these beautiful fairy stamps, then please do join the, the page. We're a very friendly group. We, um, you know, we're happy to share our pictures. We're happy to give advice. It's just, it's just a nice supportive group. There's, there's not really any chance for, you know, any uh, negativity on there really. So I do suggest you join it if you're uh, if you're into these stamps. There we go. So that's our lantern there. I'm going to do one more little hedgehog. And the idea is these lanterns are sort of like warming the hedgehogs up. It's a cold day in the forest, and they're warming them up. Okay, so that's that one there. So I do try and join them up. I haven't on that one, so I might just add a little bit, sort of um, add a little bit more branch just above that. Because I do like to make them look like they're actually attached to something. Um, not done that quite as well in this one as the others, but it's hard when you're kind of chatting and <laughs> doing it at the same time. Okay, so that's all we're gonna. Well, that's sort of basically our, our fairy lantern. Sorry, our lanterns. We should call them. Our lanterns are used. We don't need those again, and we don't need the. The moon tree again. Next just step then is to get the hedgehogs in there. I'm trying to keep organised today, but you know my you know I said I'm a messy crafter, I can't help it. But you know it's my mess, I know what I'm doing with it, it's fine. <laughs> um, my husband agrees, like I am messy, but you know, I get things done, don't I? He's not messy. So we kind of work well together because he quite often ties up my mess. <laughs> I know that's naughty, isn't it? He shouldn't have to do it. But he does encourage me to try and be more tidy and organised. Right, so I'm going to do this so that the hedgehog is facing the lantern. So he's going to be sort of sitting on the part of the tree there and sniffing over to the lantern. Just give it a few seconds. I prefer my placing of the, uh, there we go, I prefer my placing of the lantern on this one in the middle there, I must admit, I kind of went a bit skew whiff on the original one, I wasn't quite where I wanted it, so you know, this is why it's sometimes good to do two, isn't it, you can just build it and get those effects that you wanted in the first place. And then the next one that I'm going to do is the little one here, who's kind of uh, getting a bit of a warm, sort of place in there like that. He's having a bit of a warm under that light. So we'll do the light coming down to that level. It looks a bit like he's floating, so I'm just going to probably add a bit more detail to that branch there, at, well, that root to the bottom. So that's our hedgehogs used up. Okay, there we go. And the next stage is just a bit of that creeping vine. What's it called? No, hanging vine, sorry. I like to give you the proper names of these things. So this one is called Hanging Vine. And what I did with this one was I've got a masking card. Nice, very homemade. Okay, as you can see, I've got my previous stamping on there. Don't you just love how dirty my uh, 
my paper towel is. <laughs> oh dear. I've got I've got some more. I've got some new rolls now, so I can bring some up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this as a mask, and then I'm going to build up some of that vine. So for this one, for the vine, I use Twilight. All the other stamping has been Nocturne so far. There we go. So you can see we've built up some around it and we can come in with some ink there so that's fine that we haven't quite got it going to the edge. Okay. So that's our hanging vine. Not Yeah, hanging vine. I got the name right. Yes. Um, that's our hanging vine stamp. Yes, yeah, so that's all of our stamping done, guys. So now a lot of the detail is in the coloration now then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a mask though. And I'm going to go over, although it does look very cute as it is, I think. But I'm going to go over the tree with a mask um, with the purple. Okay, so I'm going to go first find Claire Monarch. So we're going for this sort of like, it's almost like a sort of misty, misty effect, but with a purple colour. So I'm just going to go in, this should pick up the bottom of that hedgehog as well you know I said the hedgehog didn't quite look like he was grounded this should hopefully pick up that as well now I'm going down so we've got a sharper line at the top so I'm bringing my blender down with my ink so I've got that sharp line you see what I mean see what I mean there yeah and then obviously that looks a bit weird because of how we've cut off the tree so I'm just going to bring it in and I think last time I bought it did I do it this way or did I blend? No, I blended up actually in the end. So it didn't look quite as defined. So that it looked a bit more misty. That was it. There is like, you know, logic to my madness sometimes. Sometimes, not always. But sometimes. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got a little bit more there, you see. And we can fill in that gap in a minute. That's not a problem. And I'm just going to bring in a bit more. And it just sort of blends in really nicely with that colour there as well. So I'm just going to go in now over those gaps. Okay, so I had to skip on a little bit because of memory problems. but um, So you can see we've started building up that layer now of the, uh, the sort of mist. I think that's come out really nicely. So I'm not going to do too much more down the bottom. Except I'm just going to do, pop it this way and add a bit more with the monarch because I think it almost looks like it's creeping over that particular area. And then you've got that lighter area in front, which I really like actually. So I'm going to leave it like that. Shock, controversy. I know it's a bit different, but I'm happy with that. Okay, so now I'm actually happy with the sky as well. I'm not going to go in with that moon. I don't think, but if I was to, I'll show you how I did it. I I, could, I suppose I could do with the Distress Oxide actually, but um, I went over it like this. So I put a mask in place. The only thing I think I might get away with without ruining it is, or the look that I want anyway, is maybe using a bit of Distress Oxide Spice Marmalade. Because I want to keep, kind of retain that orangeness of the sky, I'm just going to go round... Okay, I'm trying not to get too much on the hedgehog because the Distress Oxides do sort of dumb down the first fine Claire a little bit. Yes, I'm really happy with that. It's not taken away from the actual coloration that I'm liking at the moment. So the final stage is just to start building up some colour on your hedgehogs and on your lanterns. So I'm going to come in with some Posca pens and some, some Sakura Jelly Roll pens and we'll, we'll add a bit of colour. So I'm going to just bring in a little bit of colour onto the hedgehog's faces. So I'm using the white, okay, and I'm just basically trying to go around the um, the black areas. So I'm not really taking out any of the detail. So if you just make sure you're looking at it really closely and you're just doing it really carefully, it should be all right. Obviously, if you do go over a bit of the black, 
then you can go in you know with a um with a stabilo oil pencil just make sure it's fairly sharp so you've got that fine detail um or maybe a fine liner pen that you like to use okay so that's that hedgehog just going to do the tiny one so the lovely thing about these hedgehogs is that they're different sizes too so you know that's that's really good if you're sort of thinking about perspective and things as well isn't it and they're like a little family aren't they basically so that's our hedgehogs painted in and then what i would do is i get a little bit of detail on the candle so those areas that are you can see i've got the gaps in the candle i just go over with a bit of white and i'm using my yellow posca pen to add detail to the flame and to the actual lamp so i'm going to color that inside yellow okay so i'm just going to go in with a bit of color um, around the outside of the lantern as if it's giving off light. I do do this in the yellow and the white. And I'm trying to get a little bit of the light down to the to the hedgehogs. So I will add a bit more white on their back so it looks like and on the, this one's um, sort of face just to make it look like he is, you know, getting a bit of something from that from that lantern. So then I'm just going to go over with my, my finger and just sort of um, pad it down a bit more. Okay. I don't mind that it's smudged, that's fine. And then I'm just going to pop a little bit. Make sure you're picking up your white jelly roll and not your stardust. And then I'm just going to go in a little bit and get some white detail on his fur. Just so he looks like he's a bit lit up. Okay. Because obviously his face is white anyway. And this one I'm just going to do a couple of white bits on his back. So it looks like, again, he's getting that light. Okay, and then I'm just going to go in with my jelly roll and get some white detail on there. And again, give it a smudge. And I like doing this on the tree. I'm just doing squiggle lines, really. Okay, but kind of in the shape, I think, that the shadows will, or the light, I should say, will fall. And then what I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to go in with a little bit of white detailing on some of the, the stamping that I've done there. Because obviously some of those... Uh, some of those plants are going to look like they've got a bit of light cast on them, aren't they? Only certain ones. Obviously, don't do all of them. Just the ones near the light. Okay. There we go. Right, so I'm happy with those. So last thing I'm going to do on this bit is I'm going to add in... Um, I've got some Dovecraft 3D pearl effects. Um, I don't know which which kind of pearl sort of pearl glue you use i just pick these up at a local craft shop um and i'm just going to go in over the the sort of circles on the chain this is meant to be like the chain hanging the the lanterns so it just makes it look like it's actually made out of gold okay so any kind of um 3d i think i think um, Cosmic Shimmer do a version, don't they? And um, there's other there's other makes as well. So you should be able to get something that's an equivalent to this on the Fairy Stamper um, page or shop. If you go and have a look on fairystamper.com. So do drop me any comments as well, by the way, guys. I always like to reply, reply to comments. Um, love to hear what you you know what you're working on. Maybe what stamps you're desperate to get, which ones you really like. Um, I'll happily chat with you about these things, and it's, uh, it's just interesting, isn't it, when you meet people in the same sort of community? Nice, it's nice to have a chat to them. So I'm happy with that now. The only other thing I'm going to do is go in and put a bit of a border. Okay, so I'm going to go for that sort of like uh, light 
purpley colour again. So I'm using the Wilton Violet Distress Oxide. <laughs> it's like, panic, where's it gone? Now what I do with this is I just pop over the top a mask again, just so I know I'm not actually going to, um, you know, get anything on my piece of art. And then I'm just going to rub around the edge. Now, I'm using the Distress Oxide specifically because I want to blend it with water afterwards. So I'm just moving it around so I'm making sure I'm not getting any of my actual art. You know, make sure everything's dry before you do this stage with a mask because it's going to pull everything up. But luckily, it's not, it's not really done anything on mine, so we're fine. I was lucky. It's not stuck to all my 3D pearl effects. Now I'm just going to go in with a brush and some water and spread that colour around a bit more. Once it's dry, I'll go back in with another colour and then maybe do the edging with like twilight or medieval blue possibly. Okay, so let me go and dry it and I'll show you the finished piece in a second. Okay, I'm back guys. So I've added, um, I went for warm breeze in the end because I thought it would be nice to sort of match up this colour around the edge with the colour in the bottom here, which... There's a beautiful colour but there's not much of it so I thought it'd be nice to do that. So there are some areas that are a little bit darker but that's absolutely fine. It's because I've got a grubby blender but I kind of like that about it to be honest. It adds, adds a bit of a, an unusual touch. Um, so I'm really pleased with this one. I will. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to, while we're on camera, I'm just going to extend that branch a little bit at the top there just with a stabilo or pencil it needs a bit of a sharpen but that's fine i just wanted to make it look like it wasn't you know just sort of hanging um hanging there so happy with that so that's our original uh, sorry that's our, the one we did today and that is our original i'm liking both but i think i actually so that's the original that's the one we've just done together i actually think i prefer the one we've just done together so i do like to put them side by side and let you have a look Okay, so I do hope you've enjoyed spending some crafting time with me today. I've loved every minute of it. I um, really love getting my stamps out and I've, I've really enjoyed using these fairy hug stamps as well, which are ever so pretty. So all of those are available, like I say, at fairystamper.com. I will put links to them in the description below. I'll also put links to the Facebook page, uh, Fairy Stamper Hugs, that I was talking about earlier, where you can, you know, check people's um, ideas, have a chat, just generally, you know, get some fairy stamp love, okay? So um, I do have a YouTube channel as well, which I mentioned earlier. I'll pop a link to that in the description. And I also have a Facebook page that I post all my artwork on if you want to go and have a look. But um, do, do consider joining those Facebook groups. They're great. And uh, if you want to subscribe, as I said to the channel, if you just hit the button on the left there, which is the Fairy Stamper um, logo, that will subscribe you to the channel. We do have videos coming out. Um, at least two or three times a week generally so you'll get lots of um, you know lots of video there and lots to keep you inspired and please like I say do drop any comments and um, I love getting back to you and it'd been really nice to have a chat about all these beautiful stamps okay take care then I will see you next time and happy crafting bye